What's up everyone, this is Andre from Indie Arts Midwest, and in this video we're going to be setting up a simple suspension rig. So as you can see here, I have a suspension that I downloaded from Sketchfab, and it's only two parts to start off with, the top and the bottom. It originally came with a spring, but I decided to go with creating my own. So we will start by adding a circle, rotating it 90 degrees on the x-axis, scaling it to 0.25, or whatever scale in particular you're going for, and then grab it on the x-axis, moved it over. I set mine to 0.2. So the next thing we'll do is go to the modifiers tab and select screw. And I'm going to set screw to, oh, let's say four, though you can set this to what you consider fitting to your own setup. Next, I'm going to move this up to the base of the bottom piece of our suspension and bump up the iterations. Scale it up a little bit. That seems about okay. Take a look at it here and scale it to your liking. And then I'll add more to the iterations now that we have a better idea on what we're working with. I'll go ahead and scale it down just a hair. But as you can see, when I squash, it deforms and that's what we're trying to avoid. So as you can see, we have some pretty basic settings here for the screw modifier. You can increase the steps for the viewport or a render, and that will determine how smooth or solid your spring looks. I'm just keeping it at 16 and 16, but if you want to go higher, then you'll get a smoother outlook. Again, that is completely up to you. All right, I'll go ahead and save. Great. And I'm just going to do some minor editing to widen my spring a little bit more. So I just went into edit mode and moved it a little more to the right. I decided to bump the screw setting up to five and then scale it down just so it gave a little more stretch to the default form of the suspension. Next, I'm going to hide the bottom and top of the suspension, and we're going to ignore the fact that I also hit the spring. I went ahead and named it spring, and then unhit it so that I can now add an armature. So I'm going to move it up a little bit, right a few notches below where the base of the spring begins. Next, I'm going to select the top of the bone and grab on the Z axis and move it a few notches above the spring. I decided to go down just one on either end to give myself a little more room. Right click, subdivide, and we're going to do eight cuts. And also, this is another area where you can add a few more or less depending on the type of suspension spring that you're working on. So we'll go ahead and select the second bone and disconnect it and continue that same step for each bone above it till we get to the top. Great. And as you can see, I'm just going to double check here, see if I missed anything, totally did, and we're good. So if we go into pose mode, we can see that our second bone is indeed separated from the root bone, but is still a child of, meaning that every consecutive bone will follow all rotations of the root bone. 
And I'll just go ahead and test to make sure all of them are separated as we need. Fantastic. Go back into object mode. And I decided to extrude the top bone just one more time. Simply to give myself a little more room on the back end. So essentially, I'm wanting to create a top and bottom anchor so that all the bones in between will deform the spring, but the top bone will have the least influence, similarly to the root bone. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the screw modifier so that it can be parented to our armature. And we will select the spring and then the armature, followed by Control P to parent with automatic weights. Next, I want to go to the dope sheet and select the action editor so I can do some default poses. We see that I'm on frame one. So next we will select all the bones and press I to insert location and rotation. And then next we will move up to frame 20. As you can see, if we grab on the Z axis, the spring will squash just a bit. Creating the squash effect, we want it to be very small. So in my case, it was grabbing Z minus 0.05. We just move up to each bone and give it that same setting. And slowly, you can see that it starts to squish a little bit more and more. And we just work our way to the top. Fantastic. And as you can see, I didn't want it to squish down too much. And next we select the first frame, shift D and move it over to frame 40. After that, I can change the endpoint of the timeline to 40 and we can preview the animation. And as you can see, we have a nice squash and back to default. If you feel like doing any minor editing, feel free. As you can see, I selected the bottom bone and had it move up a little bit simply so that it appears as though the base of our spring isn't moving down. Considering that all the other flu uh, bones above it are pushing downward, but we want to have a little bit of pushback so that it gives the visual look of resistance. So, so the main goal was just to keep it at the line initially where it started. But like I said, feel free to tweak it as you see fit to make sure everything moves the way that you would like. And I'll go ahead and unhide the top and bottom of our suspension so we can get a better look at it overall. Now just a few more steps. I'm going to select the base bone. Go into object mode, select our suspension base, shift select the armature, then we will go back into pose mode, then control P to parent the base to that bone. And we'll just repeat a similar process for the top of the suspension. I'll go ahead and select this top bone here, select the top part of the suspension, shift select the armature, control tab into pose mode and control P and parent. Now let's play the animation and see what we got. Now, as you can see, I wanted to tweak the 
suspension so that it lined up a little bit better with the top of the spring. So I just made a few changes here and made sure to insert the location of rotation. And I'd say that looks pretty good. Lastly, I applied the location, rotation, and scale, which allows for this animation to be rotated and still function as needed. And if you see here, when I zoom in, you can see there's a small amount of movement, but not too much to be concerned about. Also check the top here. It doesn't appear to be hardly any movement at all. We can see it sinks in just a bit, not enough for anyone to look that close and be worried about other than myself. See that when I rotate it, everything moves along with the armature. And that wraps up this tutorial. If you found this information helpful, coming up with an alternative process was really interesting. So I hope that you find unique ways to use it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.